building the business case for them. And I think we can all agree now that the time for debate is over. Uh, so instead, today, I want to frame our conversation a little bit differently. I want to move away from the 11 million, uh, the, the stats of 11 million people in 100 million sessions. Um, because what we really want to do is make all of these interactions deliberately new. What we mean by that is that each individual transaction, each customer interaction is uniquely important to that customer. And each transaction represents an opportunity to be more deliberately human, to build ever more personal and human connections uh, with and for our customers. That's what we see mobile. That's how we see mobile. And in doing that, in making it more deliberately human, uh, we understand that customers want choice and control. Uh, we view mobile as our customers' primary portal to convenience. Um, you know, in days gone by, uh, if you wanted to interact with a, a bank, you, you had to go to the branch. Uh, over time, you could call the bank. Then there were ATMs, and then online banking. And now it's all of those, plus mobile. And mobile is the one that's really gotten the most reach with the customer. Uh, it's the one that's extended uh, so that customers can access it 24 by 7, anytime, anywhere. So if there's something you can do in a branch, or over the phone, or online, we want our customers to be able to do that via mobile. That is our approach. We want to surround our customers with a convenient set of tools that help make their lives easier on a day-in, day-out basis. Let me show you what we The most convenient way to bank is right here. And it's better than ever. With Bank of America Mobile Banking, they can securely deposit checks you get right away with your smartphone camera. Watch this. And now with Bank of America, you can securely send money from your smartphone or tablet. You only need the person's mobile phone number or email address. No more checks and no more IOUs. Check balances, pay bills, transfer money, and more. You can bank on your schedule. Right here. Download the Bank of America mobile banking app today. It's really, really cool. So that's what we talk about when we talk about making things more convenient <coughs> for our customers. And the reason why we're focused here is that we've all seen a tremendous uh, evolution let's say within the last 24 months. And it, for, for me personally, and I'm sure for, for you as well, it's been amazing to experience. Uh, think about how your personal interactions have changed. Think about how you consume information. All of that has been revolutionized through mobile. And more and more people, it's not just the early adopters, now, now it's really across the broad spectrum uh, of folks that are really engaged in Cell phones and tablets now are more powerful than laptops. And I'm not talking about computing, although in some cases that's true. What we really mean here is that they're more powerful because they offer the power to connect. Um, mobile is always on, always connected. Uh, everyone inherently knows this. That's not new to this group. But the question that you want to ask yourself is, are you making the most of it? Uh, are you making the most of a 24 by 7 connection to your customers in a way that benefits them? Uh, Mobile is also more convenient and more top of mind. We've we talked about that and saw that in the video. Um, but it enables you to reach your customers in a way not possible before. And that is really significant. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it comes down to engagement. And so we, we, you know, we saw the chart earlier with the red bars showing uh, our customers and their increasing uh, uh, engagement with Bank of America through how many times they interact per month. Engagement is everything. Um, our data shows that our mobile customers are twice as engaged as our online customers. And so if you have somebody that's highly engaged, uh, interacting with you more often than any other channel, uh, you have a tremendous opportunity. And that opportunity is to help your customers, give them more reasons to do business with you, uh, and provide more value-added services. You have that opportunity too, across any industry that you So how do we approach mobile? Well, I'll tell you that there's no secret sauce. Uh, we certainly begin by listening to our customers. Um, we pursue multiple avenues of research. We do in-home interviews, we do focus groups, uh, we uh, engage through social media. Uh, we find lots of ways to connect with our customers. Uh, 
Uh, we talk to our associates who have interactions with our customers every single day. What we look for is a way to identify common sense solutions to common problems. If we find something that we see resonates with the customer, we prototype them, we test them, we iterate on them, and then deploy them. Testing along the way that is really delivering value to the customer. Um, you see a recent quote here from, from Jack Dorsey, and, and we share this view, um, and, and we take a similar approach. Uh, I think at Bank of America, we have the size and scale to take these uh, innovations, these, uh, these improvements and, and conveniences for customers, and bring them to people at scale. And that's important, because in this space, you have to be patient. Uh, when you look for the investment that you're making in mobile and you look to see how it will affect uh, your bottom line, uh, you have to realize that it's the right thing to do because your customers are engaging that way. Uh, so you have to be patient and trust that the investment that you make in mobile over the long term will provide the benefits that you're looking for both to your customer uh, and to the company itself. But there is no one best solution. Uh, when we talk to our customers, we see that there's more than one way that they want to interact. The danger for larger companies, banks, and, and non-banks is that we develop customer experience uh, and then piece it together, right? So experiences in different channels or uh, different products, different services, uh, and customers can see that and feel that. There aren't many companies that can deliver the big picture. So we're often forced to make those patchwork type decisions. Um, what I can tell you is it's important, and what we recognize, it's very important to deliver this in a seamless, integrated fashion so your customers understand what you're trying to give them. Uh, for example, uh, perhaps at this conference and, and certainly uh, through other outlets, there's been a lot of talk around emerging payments and mobile wallets. Uh, Chuck mentioned it in his intro. Uh, this is just using your cell phone to make debit and credit card purchases. But the goal here is to really add value to that interaction. It's to find ways to make that experience more convenient, uh, more, uh, more expeditious, uh, and more integrated, so that customers feel the value of that. Uh, you may have read last week, uh, it was reported that uh, we are running a, uh, a trial in Charlotte uh, with some of our associates where they can actually scan a QR code. These are the types of innovations that we, we look at and we try to find out how to make it resonate with the customer. And is it something that the customer finds value in? Uh, and we test lots of approaches. That's, that's just a couple of them. We, we've been running trials in the mobile payment space since 2009. Uh, we don't talk about them publicly very often. Um, but we do them because we want to make sure that at the end of the day, what gets put out in the market is something that the customer uh, is going to use, is going to understand, and is going to drive <coughs> Because no matter how neat these innovations are, uh, no matter how great we think they are, if it doesn't make sense to the customer, uh, it will never scale. And that's crucially important in our business. And I'm sure it is in yours as well. So let's talk about some of these recent innovations. These are tangible examples of things that we just recently launched. Um, on the left there, you see uh, mobile push alerts. Um, so we've had alerts at Bank of America for quite some time. But when we talk about making sure that you deliver things seamlessly and in an integrated fashion, uh, we wanted to make sure customers could sign up and use these alerts right from their mobile app. Because what better way to alert somebody that they have something they need to take care of than giving them an alert to their mobile phone? Uh, so we just recently launched this. And what you can see is um, uh, the alerts show up in the app right then and there. Customers can get them 24 by 7. Uh, but more importantly, you can take action on that. So it may be hard to read right here, but that top alert is for a low balance situation. And the link right below that is make transfer. So the idea, I mean, just simple connections, simple things that help customers <coughs> solve these problems uh, can go a long way. And we've demonstrated that. Uh, mobile tech deposit, we just recently launched that as well. Uh, you know, this is something that has just been really exciting for our customers. Uh, this is something that, uh, we just get lots of positive feedback on it. Uh, the idea that you can uh, use your phone or tablet, take a picture of a check, avoid a trip to the ATM or the banking center is huge. Uh, I 
especially, uh, I would expect in this group, uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, digitally focused folks here. Uh, you know, these are the types of interactions that are just uh, you know, game changing for you. Uh, much more convenient. Uh, we've also launched a new service called Bank of Marios. Um, this is also very important because it speaks to one of the top needs that our customers talk about, and that's helping them save and manage their money. So with Bank of America deals, uh, Bank of America presents offers to customers um, that are relevant to them, and that they can review and select right from their mobile app. And to redeem those offers, all they need to do is swipe their Bank of America credit and debit card, and it's automatically credited back um, to their account. That's the type of seamless interaction that we're talking about. Something that's very easy to use, doesn't require the customer to jump through a lot of hoops, and makes makes a lot of sense to the customer. Same thing on the email and mobile transfers. This is a, a, another new service that we launched where customers can simply uh, transfer money to somebody by entering in a phone number or email address. Um, so we talked about the, uh, the babysitting example earlier. Uh, that's a great use case for that. You know, instead of giving uh, your babysitter a check or um, having to stop by the ATM for cash, uh, simply transfer the money to them. It's more convenient for them. They don't have to go to the boss to check. Um, it's more convenient for you because you don't have to worry that you've got, uh, you've got your checkbook handy or you've uh, got cash in your wallet. Simple interactions, simple interactions that make customers' lives easier. So let's talk about how we get customers using these services and how we get them engaged. Um, you know, when we think about mobile marketing at Bank of America, there's, there's really two things that we think about. One is marketing of mobile, right? So how do we get people aware of the services that I just talked to you about? How do we get them engaged? How do we get them to adopt? Uh, and then there's marketing in mobile. So how do we leverage the mobile channel to tell customers about the products and services that Bank of America offers holistically? <coughs> For marketing of mobile, there's really a few things that we're trying to do. Um, one is simply demonstrate the value. So tell the customers why uh, this, will, this particular feature or product will make their lives easier. Um, ultimately, we're trying to get an entice them to adopt. We want customers to leverage this channel. We fundamentally believe that it's a very convenient way for customers to interact. Um, and then once they're in that experience, we want to deliver something that's, that is easy to use and keeps them active, keeps them coming back. So a lot of our marketing is focused on that, trying to drive, uh, a lot of our mobile marketing is, is, drive, um, is focused on driving customers to leverage the convenience of mobile. And marketing in mobile is a great way to introduce um, existing customers to other products and services. Um, and I think this is fundamentally based on the fact that customers' behavior is changing, right? They're consuming more content via mobile. Uh, they're willing to do more and more via mobile. Um, you know, if any of you are, are focused on the mobile space, I think we've all been uh, pleasantly surprised with how willing customers are uh, to engage VMO uh, because of that. Um, and we see stats that prove this out. We see search ads spending being mobile increase 300% uh, according to some reports uh, just within the last year. Uh, we see the mobile search accounts for 14% of uh, total search budgets. Uh, according to some sources. So we have a great opportunity if we market to customers in truly customer-centric ways, if we're presenting things that they value and that make sense to them. Uh, it gives customers more reasons to do business with us, uh, and we see the results of it. We see thousands of customers interact and research and review and apply for Bank of America products and services via mobile every month. But things are moving quickly. Um, not unlike trying to change a tire on a moving bus, uh, the, growth, the growth of mobile has led us to start reassessing our approach to marketing and advertising. Uh, over the past few years, as we've built our mobile platform and built our customer base, uh, we've primarily been using agencies that specialized in mobile uh, to help drive our digital efforts there. But now, mobile's going mainstream. So mobile marketing in many ways is digital marketing. And the big agencies are bringing mobile capabilities into their fold. Uh, and it's part of their core offering. It has to be. It has to be if they want to survive. This past quarter uh, was the first time that mobile banking was featured as a mass media campaign. That was a commercial that we just showed you. 
that's a significant turning point. That, that shows the importance of mobile to Bank of America, and I think it shows the, uh, the importance of mobile to, to our customer base as well. Um, we've also developed a holistic surround sound marketing campaign. So we're trying to reach customers in a variety of different methods, whether it's uh, online, in mobile, uh, mass media, uh, other forms of advertising, trying to make customers aware, trying to make sure they understand uh, what it is that we can offer them through the channel. And we've been focusing on two things. Uh, a, we're available when you need it. Probably the most important thing about mobile. And two, we're focused on helping customers overcome these barriers to adoption. Helping customers uh, understand that uh, mobile does add value and it, it does so in a way that can't be replicated uh, in other channels. So we have to figure out how we incorporate mobile into everything we do. And I would, I would offer the same advice to everyone as well. And the reason is, is because mobile represents a tremendous opportunity. It's real time, it's location aware, it provides 24 uh, by 7 access to the customer. You know, I know for me personally, if I'm away from my phone for more than five, ten minutes, you know, I start getting a little antsy, start looking for it. Everybody feels that, right? Everybody feels that. And it's something that uh, helps demonstrate how important it is to make this a part of what you're doing. And because it's real time, because it's location aware, and because you have 24 by 7 access, it's very personal. Mobile in itself is very personal. Uh, I don't enjoy giving somebody else my, my phone. You know, that's, that's my device. That is something that is uh, very personal to me, and I suspect a lot of folks feel the same way. So there's a realization there that it is important to make that connection with your customer and leverage mobile uh, to, to give you that reach. Uh, Time Magazine recently did a survey of 5,000 people worldwide and found that one in four people check their phone every 30 minutes. One in five every ten minutes. Um, that's a lot of eyeballs on the mobile device, and a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity that you got. Uh, Eighty-four uh, percent said that they put their mobile phones uh, in their bedroom at night, with sixty-eight percent of them right next to them uh, uh, on their nightstand or in their bed. Yeah, not many channels have that kind of reach. But are there too many cooks in the kitchen? You know, what what is what are customers what are customers concerned about when when they have this reach and this access? Um, there's a point where the amount of information that's available through mobile and the number of companies competing for uh, the customer's attention uh, can be overwhelming, and there are pitfalls in that. At Bank of America, customer trust and security is paramount. We recognize that once that trust has been violated, it's, it's tough to regain. So if you're using location uh, in an app, uh, if you're pushing a message to the customer, such as an order, um, it had better have value for the customer. It's critical to find that balance between connecting with customers without intruding on them or becoming noise. So I would say you need to think about three major challenges. Um, how do you differentiate yourself from your competitors? Uh, that may go too far in that arena. How are you going to cut through the noise and help your customers decide uh, to use your services uh, rather than uh, be disabled and not able to make a decision because of all the uh, all the information coming at them? And how do you avoid being uh, irrelevant? How do you make sure that you stay relevant uh, in the face of all this information getting to your customers? That's critical. And so I think there's a couple things that, that we need to walk away from this uh, discussion with. Again, mobile is the mainstream. It's no longer a differentiator, it's table stakes. Uh, think about how your company is leveraging that opportunity and making the most of it. <coughs> think about the value that mobile represents for your customers uh, and, and their interactions. Uh, at Bank of America, we're trying to incorporate mobile into everything we do. That may mean changing agent and, and <coughs> do the same. And that may mean changing some things around how you do uh, 
uh, how you do business, maybe how you market, how you advertise, uh, the agency interactions, uh, and how do you do that without hitting pause on everything that you've got in front of uh, number two, success depends on relevance. Uh, messaging services experience must be centered around the customer. They have to be customer centric. Uh, find the use cases that make sense for your business and leverage mobile to amplify them. Uh, alerts was a great example of that, right? We have alerts today, you can get them via email, you can get them via text. But this next generation of alerts where you can actually take action on them right then and there within your mobile app, that's how we're leveraging mobile to amplify. Uh, the convenience for our customers. Uh, track metrics that matter. Um, you know, I started the day with a chart that showed growth uh, in the frequency of our customers' engagement and the number of customers engaged. Uh, those metrics have helped us see how many is going on the The law will also tell us how customers are adopting our new applications and their movement from other platforms. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, those are very easy things for senior leaders to understand and take action. If you can present a compelling use case uh, and help your leadership understand the importance of mobile, uh, the, the, the more well positioned you are to take action on those. Um, the challenge that we face in looking at these metrics is that everyone has a favorite one. Uh, everyone Are looking at metrics through a lens that says, "What? How can we demonstrate this uh, within our own four walls? How do we tell the story of mobile within our own four walls?" Um, so, I, I think the advice I would give there is, it's bigger than the numbers, and it's based on the fact that customers are changing how they interact. Uh, so, the metrics won't be the same for everybody, um, and. Creating dashboards on metric after metric after metric might really mask what you're after, which is how do I add value to that customer's life? How do I make this interaction better? Uh, um, and again, customers expect choice and control. They expect the companies they interact with to fit into their lifestyle. It's not an option. Uh, they want to be able to do things in a, in a variety of channels. So while certainly we expect mobile to uh, shift some of the customer interactions. Uh, we don't expect it to supplant. Uh, mobile, mobile is an, an addition. It's another channel that customers like to engage in. And you have to give them that choice to be able to do things in a variety of ways. Um, and throughout all this, it's very important to keep things simple and intuitive. Uh, yeah. As mobile becomes adopted by greater and greater and, and more and more folks, are doing more with, with mobile, using apps, and, and uh, engaging in a much more uh, sophisticated way. It's more critical than ever to make sure that the interactions that you're creating with mobile are simple and intuitive. Uh, that's how you will get mass co customer adoption, and that's how you'll see the tipping point in your own industries. So I'll close with this. Um, what is success? Uh, for us, it means building more personal and human connections with customers. Um, you'll see here a funny story of uh, a quote from one of our customers in our mobile payment trials. Um, now, we can't always expect to have this kind of impact. Uh, we can't always promise that uh, uh, that we will have this personal <laughs> of an example. But the idea here is that there's uh, nothing more human than love. And, and so, more practically, I think success means having your entire enterprise understand that mobile is not a side project or a nice to have. Uh, it's a strategic imperative that needs to be integrated into your broader marketing efforts. Uh, and you should make sure that you're leveraging mobile to drive choice control and convenience for the customer. And perhaps most important, you're engaging customers in a way that adds value to their relationship with you. Adding value with their relationship. That is, uh, that is the power of mobile. So with that, I'll close and uh, take any questions that we have. Great. Uh, anyone, if anyone has any questions, just raise your hand so I can bring the microphone to you. Um, I, I've got one before we start. Can you talk a little bit, use Jack Morsey's quote from Twitter, uh, you feel it. 
Uh, Bank of America, as, a, as all banking institutions, culturally typically doesn't say, well, we feel like doing this. I mean, they're kind of numbers driven sorts of things. Can you talk a little bit about the corporate culture, how that, how that evolved so that you embrace it like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think as customer expectations have evolved, uh, so too have our desires to make sure we're being honest. So, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about the fact that we listen to customers. And customers are very vocal about the fact that they want to do, uh, they want to have a lot of interactions available to be available. And so, the four examples I gave with alerts and, and transfers and uh, well, check deposit, those are the types of things uh, that help meet those customer needs. So, when we approach it through that lens, the conversation internally is, is very easy. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of support for making sure that we're doing the things that make customer lives easier. And so <coughs> that, that is essentially the core So does that mean there's not such a push for short-term ROI? Um, correct. Uh, well, it, it's really not about ROI. Uh, it, you know, over time, the, the business models will prove out. I, I think uh, what it's about is making sure that you're doing things that customers um, uh, customers find value. And so if you can take a common sense interaction, like being able to uh, take a picture of a check and deposit it that way, um, your ROI will prove out because ultimately you're making your customers more happier. They're willing to give you more business. Um, so ROI is important, but Focusing on the customer and delivering experiences that resonate with them on one day. Great. I might ask you a question. If you can name, uh, state your name and company, we'd appreciate it. I'm Sam Carter from Therm. Um, from a strategic standpoint, have you been able to track whether mobile has been uh, either a retention strategy and you're keeping customers, or have you found it to be uh, a business generator getting more customers? Uh, I think by its nature, it's both, and it, and it has to be both. Um, you know, uh, the convenience that it provides uh, is so important to our customers and so important to the general population. Uh, it, it definitely helps in both of those areas. Hi, Kim Sutter with Coca-Cola. Um, two questions. Um, obviously, we have similar, not exactly similar scale, and business models are slightly different, but. Uh, kind of going upon what you were asking with the ROI, um, at what threshold do you focus on a platform? Specifically in terms of your, your very app focus right now, at what point will you focus that more on mobile web? And then at what point do you decide what portion of mobile web you focus on? So because mobile is so important to what we do at Bank of America, we're actually focused on, on three platforms. We offer three platforms. So we have uh, a wide variety of mobile apps that are native. Uh, our goal there is to maximize the reach. So we've got apps for iPhone, iPad, Android, Android tablet, uh, even Kindle Fire. Um, so reach is important. But we also have a mobile website for the folks that choose to engage that way. And we also offer uh, banking by text message where you can get uh, balances and transaction information uh, via text message as well. So that idea of trying to maximize the reach and trying to provide the customer choice Whatever way the customer is most comfortable interacting with us, we want to make sure that we're there. Thank you. And then the second question is, do you find your traditional agencies right now are meeting your needs in mobile? And if they are not, are you looking for them to educate themselves, or do you find yourself focusing more and more niche agencies that are focused on mobile? You know, I, I think everybody in the industry um, sees the importance of mobile. So it's not... Um, we see that everybody is taking the journey with us. And uh, our goal is to make sure that we impress uh, upon the partners that we work with the fact that we want mobile to be uh, a big part of our messaging to customers. And, and I think that's demonstrated by the you know, commercial use. So. Uh, Ken Wolke, Stitch Test Health. Um, I'm curious over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm curious, how has the uh, regulated environment, or maybe sometimes a lack of it, impeded how how much simplicity you can bring to your consumers? Does it hinder how innovative you can be? Do you have to wait longer to bring something like the uh, 
the solutions you've just shown us previously? Um, yeah, at the end of the day, yes, regulation is something that, that, we, um, that, that we have to work with. Uh, but the customer experience uh, and how easy you make that for the customers um, is the most important thing. It's, it's the, the thing we focus on the most when we do new product development. So we find ways, regardless of the environment uh, that we work in, we find ways to make sure that things are very easy for customers to understand. Uh, we think about uh, where we place every button and uh, every interaction that a customer has to undertake to uh, take part in some of the services that we offer. So we've been very deliberate about how we do usability testing, about how we make sure that customers are telling us uh, that these things are very easy to use. So, uh, certainly we operate in that environment, but we do so in a way that um, uh, makes sure that the customer experience is preserved. Yeah. Hey there, I'm Jason from PayPal Media Network. Um, following up on the, on the first question that was asked, what within the has been a method of retaining uh, customers or growing the customer base from Bank of America, how important is it to you uh, and your team to differentiate the type of technology and suite of products that you offer your customers from what other banks are doing? And is that a strategic focus to look across the competition and say, okay, what do we need to bring to the table to retain these customers, to grow customers? Yeah, I would say our focus is really on making sure the experiences that we provide our customers uh, are, are right uh, for our customers. And so, you know, it, it kind of goes into what I was just talking about a second ago with how much energy we put into making sure the services are easy to use. Uh, for us, uh, it's not necessarily about being first to market, it's about being right to market. So we want to make sure that uh, the solutions that we put into our customers' hands are <coughs> secure, reliable, and easy to use. And, and that's what we focus on. Okay, thank you, Mark Prashevsky. Thank you. is setting up, uh, Mark will be outside the room at the time if anyone has any private questions. I know sometimes people like to ask these things not in front of everybody else, so feel free to do that while we're getting the next panel set up, which will start in about three minutes.
Matthew's a longtime mobile expert and consultant, going back to the days when we called all of this wireless. I know some of you remember that. <clears throat> His career spans from developing video camcorders at Sony in the late 80s to running the development of some of the first mobile devices to hit markets in the, in the 90s at Nokia. Matthew, take it away. Thanks, John. Thank you. Well, before we start, thank you very much for coming to this panel. There's a lot out there this week, and uh, I'm just going to interested in this specific topic. How many in this room are from the agency world? How many brands? And how many technology companies? OK, so we're, we're brands and technology companies, and the agencies are later today. Well, we have them up on the panel. We so like that. We like that. Yeah. So first of all, I'd just like each one of you, we'll start out with Michael at the end to quickly introduce yourself, a little bit uh, your background with uh, mobile, and then also what you're doing in the agency and then how mobile is integrated into what you do in the agency. Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Collins. I'm the CEO of Jewel. We are a mobile marketing agency. We are part of WPP. Uh, we also act as Group M's mobile specialist agency. Group M is the uh, media investment management side of WPP. Uh, we are a global operation. We have uh, the offices here in the, in the US, uh, in, in EMEA, in Asia, and in, uh, in Australia as well. Uh, we are a full service agency. We look to be able to deliver, uh, look to be able to connect our brands to consumers across any mobile touch point. Um, so that is everywhere from the campaign strategy, design, tech, and media, to the R&D, data and measurement. Um, so again, we have, with that broader set of capabilities, we look to be able to establish meetings and dialogue uh, with consumers for our brands really across any mobile touch point. So my name is uh, Rick Gardner, and I represent an agency called Bruner. Uh, we're an independent agency, a little bit different I think, than some of the other panelists. 225 people based in Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and Washington, D.C. My role is Chief Digital Officer for the agency. Uh, about three years ago, we launched our mobile practice. Um, internally, we're very integrated, but externally, uh, a lot of uh, clients and brands, uh, you know, they, they want to, to buy through a, a mobile uh, specialist agency, so we do structure that way. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we also rolled uh, media and PR and social under my responsibility as well. And this predominantly as we move into the paid or known space and the integration uh, between the three areas. And digital, obviously, the driver as well as mobile and content. I'm Molly Garris. I'm based in Chicago working for Leo Burnett. We're a very old agency. Um, in our building, the Mark Room Man was created. Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Tony the Tiger. So we have um, quite a history. But when it comes to the digital era and rolling out programs on, you know, platforms like mobile, um, we are all working to get smarter about these different channels. So my role in the agency is to lead our mobile practice as well as work on other digital campaigns, but really 
to educate and evangelize about these emerging channels um, <coughs> to our agency. Hi, my name is Jay, and I run what's called the New Solutions Team at Ansible. Ansible was the mobile dedicated unit inside Interpublic, one of the other holding companies. Uh, and by uh, by nature, um, it's nebulously called New Solutions, but I myself and my team is tasked with entering new areas of services, technologies, or uh, uh, practices that we, where we can leverage uh, mobile. Hi, uh, Michael Miller. I am the CMO for Hybrid Marketing. We are an independent agency network. We own four major agency brands, Solution Set, MediaWiz, Catapult RPM, and Ryan. Uh, my job as CMO is to help architect and create solutions for our agencies and prospective clients. I also lead a series of our businesses and business practices. For us, mobile isn't actually broken out in any one division or any one group. It's integrated into each one of our client uh, client teams. And uh, that transcends the total agency network. Um, what makes us kind of different as a network is we actually bring together bespoke capabilities across the network to collaborate and form the right solutions for our clients. So that's kind of well, I'm going to start out with Jiang and, and Michael Collins. You both have been in mobile for quite some time, and uh, you've seen mobile grow, and we're still looking at mobile being about 10% of the digital budget. How has it been for you, from your perspective, just in general, kind of selling it into, 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 the, into the greater, your greater companies, and then actually working within the company itself? Sure. So, the, the, actually, that, the answer to that question has changed dramatically. In, the last 12 months, I have to say. Um, we, I, I've noticed that the pace of uh, change in uh, interest for mobile is fundamentally changing. And the types of conversations we're having is actually, ironically, no longer about mobile. So um, a lot of the, what we used to say before about like, how do we integrate mobile? What is the role of mobile? That's not really the conversations that we're seeing now. Uh, we sit in a lot of me uh, meetings, for example, with even sister agencies where we're really kind of talking about um, different aspects of the campaign and each of our different kind of uh, approaches of looking at that based on the lens that we bring to the table. So in a way, uh, it's really exciting from an integration standpoint um, and the one thing that I have to say has changed is, I don't know about you guys, but I am seeing what will become part of the standard conversation during the planning period, uh, which is extremely exciting. So Michael, your, your take on that. And, and I thought that's a very good answer, and it's and one, 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 one point to call out, um, which is I think mobile <coughs> is now on, on the brand side, the industry side, really being, being viewed as Yes, it's a challenge itself, but really be more, more viewed as how can we be used to extend my existing touch points for the consumer. So if you look at your standard purchase funnel, you're going to be touching, touching consumers at the awareness stage, consideration of purchase and beyond. Um, now in many places, certainly not all, but in, in many places, that, that, that customer contact strategy and that communications planning strategy is being done with mobile in mind. So like, how can I best connect to this consumer now mobile is a tool in the toolkit that can be thrown out there and be used. Or how do I make, how do I establish maintain that dialogue with that consumer? Um, so that has, I think that has changed dramatically again. I think a lot of that is, that is happening. I would say that that is fully there. Um, um, and I think perhaps one of the one of the other areas where mobile I think is getting more life and much more traction is, you know, not just extending, extending existing touch points, but looking at what new touch points mobile can introduce. Um, you know, mobile is does still act as a channel unto itself and can and can, and can deliver can, <coughs> can deliver a lot of benefit unto itself. The one thing where one place where I have a slightly different answer is that you know, the, the agency world, typical agencies themselves, you know, they have the, the amount of budget resources that can be typically put against innovation isn't huge. So I think why reasons like Jewel and Ansible exist is that you know, we now have well over 100 folks who do nothing but think mobile every day. That, that's that, that's what we do. That's where we focus. That's where we look. Where we're looking for innovation. Any one agency would have a very difficult time, just from for budgetary standpoints, having that level of expertise in in one field. Not to mention all the fields fields they cover. So I still think there's a very strong, robust role for the specialist agency within the groups 
at least for the foreseeable future. As global truly becomes mainstream, that will proceed. Uh, but for now, it's hard for any one agency on their own to be able to find that level of regular innovation and its local day jobs as well. You say when mobile becomes mainstream. It's not mainstream. And then let me let me hit Michael over here. So you're coming at it. You said the agency's looking at it as a complete integrated package. Is right now the debate is is it mainstream? Is it not mainstream? It's it's all part of the discussion. It's part of the dialogue. But then we're still only seeing ten percent. So how do we how how is this all going to evolve? So, you know, what's interesting is as you look at the marketplace, right, we looked at digital as always matching luggage, right? You would go out, build your brand through TV, and then you'd snap some digital activities to it and make it back, matching luggage. In the world of mobile, you know, historical was I build it, and then what's the right app for this? But when looking at the marketplace today, what we need to look at is the world of influence and persuasion, okay? In the world of influence, we're actually driving some of our mobile messages out there to influence and push, push like channels, right? When we look at persuasion, we then say, what are the applications and aggregate um, types of communication vehicles we can build for our consumer audience to, so they can engage with us, advocate on behalf of us, and we can have a healthy dialogue with them. So when does it become mainstream? I would say that if you look at the world, and we spend a lot of time with our clients looking across influence and persuasion doing things predictably through channels that they desire and then providing solutions that they can engage with so we know more about our customer i would say that mobile is mainstream today within this total marketing ecosystem it's not to say that you know every day you need to come up with a new app but if we look at our friends at chase for example you know chase does a fantastic job of putting mobile at the center They've broken commoditization of the financial industry by providing utilities and communication tools that you can interact with them on a daily basis, and that's now center of their marketing. So I would say that from a financial standpoint and a sector, which we've talked about earlier, it matters what sector you're in, and I would say some sectors are definitely far more prevalent and are there with a mobile in mainstream message and play. Some of our CPG clients, like you know Unilever, for example, I won't name any, any brands we name, but for them, it's a little bit different, right? You know, there's a lot more awareness that needs to happen in CPG space, and then when we get down to the shelf level, that's when our mobile has to kick in. So for them, Main Street for the, is a bit uh, different from an engagement standpoint, but not as it is with buyers. So Molly, a little bit from your perspective with things like Tony the Tiger and Snapper and Bob, going from uh, a brand that has such tremendous awareness, and now we look at mobile, which in many ways is a conversion tool, you know, you're in the point of sale, that last mile. And how do you look at that from a strategy? Yeah, so we look at mobile um, across the entire customer journey. So um, it, it really varies by which category. So, talking about your example of CPG, people don't need to know, like, you know, they're not going to price compare on an item that's $2 and then go across the street because it's 50 cents less expensive. Um, but for them, coupons matter, or being able to create a shopping list, um, that type of things are, you know, matter for CPG, and that's why you see the success of, like, Kraft's iFood Assistant. Those are everyday tools that people can use. So um, we look at things from that entire journey based on what types of products they're shopping. Um, when I work with appliances, um, Whirlpool is one of my brands, and people only appliance shop every seven years. So when you're talking about building a budget, I mean, it's natural that mobile is going to be a little bit on the small side because not everyone is in market for a new. Um, you need to start driving that awareness in the upper funnel, and then as they get closer to the shelf and they're looking for ratings and reviews, feature comparisons, that's where mobile can really change the game. So it really sort of depends on you know what kind of product it is, and then what that customer journey is, and, and understand where people are using mobile to affect you know their purchase decisions. She brings up, uh, Molly brings up an excellent point. I, I've been kind of wondering, um, with the topic of the panel, what, what constitutes mainstream uh, when we think about any channel for that matter? I mean, part of it is the financial aspect of it. Will, you know, will it, will it hit a certain scale that matches, you know, digital spend or overall spend? But I think what Molly is alluding to is incredibly valuable. Um, there has always been in marketing and advertising one way to think about influence. So we brand, you know, we create kind of the uh, a, a positive brand perception. 
Um, we try to be the preferred brand or product when the customer, you know, indicates a need or is aware of a need. With mobile, something entirely different opens up. You now have the option that you never had before to start planning from moment of um, need, right? So, you know, CPG is a great example, and food is a great example. There are a lot of product <coughs> categories where the decision process happens within a day or hours of purchase. So think about a world where you have the option of planning from that moment out to your brand. It's a fundamentally different way of planning and potentially a fundamentally different way to allocate your money. I want to keep this thought going. So we have this discussion of kind of paid, owned, and earned media. And now with social being a key part of this and mobile and social growing so rapidly, we're from smaller boutique, not boutique, but in a sense, a couple hundred. Never been defined as that. Yeah, <laughs> in that sense. Your, your, uh, your perspective. Yeah, you know, uh, I was struggling with the main industry question as well because I certain aspects of mobile, just like certain aspects of digital, of course it's Main Street. Uh, you, you can't go into any city, any restaurant, any bar and not realize it's Main Street. Just what aspects are Main Street, right? So seeing most of the brands, most, most of the brands we work with certainly got their digital house in order. Uh, they've gotten better at, at the mobile web and making sure wherever they're driving to is, is in order. But, but there's still a, a level of test and learn, you know, certainly across the entire digital spectrum. What we have seen, in, in CPG clients, uh, just as an example, yes, maybe not couponing at the point of sale, but ratings and reviews, if you've got a great product, empowering that at the point of sale can be really powerful. Uh, the other thing, crossing into social, uh, branded content. And I think that's something that our agency probably focuses on more than a digital response or conversion mechanism. And there's a big play for branding content, as long as it's useful. Uh, we've got a toothpaste brand which we developed a, a little brushing gamified app for children. And it didn't get much support, we didn't put a lot behind it. And it started to take off virally, started to take off through social media. And a year later, we've got probably 300,000 downloads. It's not now getting traction in Japan. And the brand is now putting paid media behind it to support it. So I think social plays a big role early on, especially with branded opportunities, um, to see if you've got something and then push it from there. In terms of this discussion of testing mobile, I've been in mobile, I've been in mobile since 95, and it's like, you know, next year's the year of mobile. I think we've kind of passed it. I think 2010 was the year of mobile, and now we're past this whole test discussion in that sense. But Michael, coming from the mobile industry, uh, being in it as long as, as I am, I feel, this, this issue of test, do you feel that we're beyond that, and now it's really, it's really kind of the overall continuation of you run a campaign and you continue building mobile. Maybe comment a little bit about this discussion of, of using mobile to test versus just being part of a growth strategy. Sure, it's, I, I don't think those, those two things are necessarily, necessarily opposites. You, mobile, the, 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 testing, the testing aspect of mobile isn't going to go away until the, the channel fully matures and there isn't much new to test. Um, right now, even just down to the core elements, what are the business models that are going to be successful that are going to help me grow my brand? There's very limited amount of, of, of case history to pull from, and as far as if we just look at mobile, what mobile was 12 months ago compared to what it is today and what will be 12 months from now, it, it will be very significantly different. Um, so with, with, the, with the rate of evolution so fast, there are always going to be new opportunities to test, there are always going to be new business models to open up. Um, so I think the, the testing aspect of it will really, really never go away. I think one of the, the big shifts we are starting to see now is that is brand's commitment level to mobile. Um, there are more and more brands, I'd still say absolutely minority, even just looking across you know, uh, uh, sort of broad spectrum that we hit, probably on about a quarter of brands I think have fully committed to mobile, meaning it is in the consideration set, they have the mobile assets available so they can monetize the value of any engagement, of any click. Um, but the number of brands that are fully committed is, is increasing very, very quickly. Um, but even the rest of brands who aren't there yet, they're still in testing learning phase. So I, we're, we're, we're very much in the early days, not just in the, not just in the, 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 what the tools are in the toolbox, but I think even how, how brands can use mobile for their business is, it, it's, it's still new, it's still young. 
And I think there's a, a general fundamental issue right now, which is we have all these brand owners in the, in the room here. Raise your hand if your site is actually mobile enabled. It's a pretty small amount versus how many people were raising their hand before. I mean, literally, I think it's close to 75% of brand sites aren't even available being mobile, being mobile optimized. So before we can even get to the campaign level, it's like our, our consumers who are living and breathing through their mobile devices can't even access our sites in mobile efficient ways. So I think one of the biggest dilemmas that we have to start leaning dollars towards or what we have to start supporting is migrating our clients towards a mobile enabled world um, with mobile optimization, then move across into a mobile channel distribution, be it SMS messaging or whatever kind of multi-platform, multi-mobile platform you engage across, and then finally get to how you're going to support them through apps and engagement in that area. So, Well, which is kind of interesting because it's kind of gone the other way first. I think there's been an excitement over apps yep. and downloads of apps without having a core mobile strategy and having just a, a, a presence. You click on a link on social media. And so what? how long is it going to take to get there? I mean, from your perspective. Well, I think, I think we're, part of it is we're talking about like having fundamental pieces in place with the acknowledgement that Consumers are going to be seeking for you, they're going to be searching for you, they're going to be going to your website. But going back a little bit to the test and learn question, I think we also um, have to get better at uh, testing and learning the right things, right? So slicing a budget, uh, a piece of your digital budget, and putting it against mobile to see if people tap on ads is not a good test and learn. That is a terrible test and learn, um, I think, but uh, kind of looking at how different screens are interrelated to each other. So for example, if you are a brand that wants to see the cause and effect between your TV um, 